start streaming. All right, we haven't done a stream in a while. It is almost the very bitter end of summer vacation and we've been busy school supply shopping, which sucks and is a total brawl to have to punch out a mom over the yellow pronged uh, plastic folder, not paper folder, which is the last one that they're gonna have at Target for sure. So all of that is done with, and we are counting down the last couple of days, and I thought that I would show you guys a uh, pretty common issue that I don't think we've seen before on this channel, which is what to do with an iPad mini that has no home button. So I'm pushing the home button. Now this has come up because it can be a bit of a troll since we just did a similar video on an iPad mini that doesn't have the power lock button. So if it doesn't have a power lock button function, that's a parts issue. And it's strange what kinds of things are rooted through the digitizer connector. So this one has power lock, but it does not have home button function. This is our known good digitizer. So let's see if we can figure out why. Jessa, your voice is a bit low today. Uh, that's probably because it's 2.42 a.m. I have recovered two, three, or four Rush data phones and uh, I don't know, five or six other jobs. And I'm ready for bed. Okay, is it a strange hour for a stream? Yes, it is. It's strange, strange hour for a stream. Why would people think that it's not normal to stream at 2.43 when obviously iPad Rehab is, a, is open, uh, where us moms are working hard at our normal hours? All right, let's take a look at this iPad mini. Now, it has recently had, here's a big hint, it has recently had a digitizer connector job. So as always, we're going to take a look first at where the last bit of work was done. So let's see if we can slide over to microscope view. Let's do this and let's take a look at that connector job. All right, so here's our connector. Connector job looks pretty good, but I can tell that there at some point was some bridging. Let's see if we can zoom in. And some of the bridges look like they were cleared on this connector, just kind of tidied up a little bit. The one thing jumps out at me, and it's important to kind of recognize the difference between no stuff, meaning there was never a component placed on the board, what you need. I'm looking for a five screen. A five? Yeah. Nope. Thank you. Yeah, this, and there's, there's a five dot in here. Rest in purple, purple envelope. Uh, okay, where's Underdog? Underdog is undoubtedly asleep because it is almost three o'clock in the morning. All right, so let's first look at, I'm gonna put this board away and swap it out here with one of the uh, student minis, which generally are wrecked. This one's not so bad. All right, so let's look at this mini. So when we look here, let's look, for example, at this spot. And you can see these pads are really, really rounded. They're so rounded, they look factory perfect. It's hard to imagine that there was ever a component there. So we have to really kind of question when we see those factory perfect pads and think, was there ever anything placed there or not? Same thing going on here. See those factory perfect pads? And if we go to ZXW, then we can really get trolled. Here, let's see if we can take you to, to ZXW. Let's see if ZXW can wake up. Let's see. Hello, everybody in chat. Long time no stream. Hmm? All right. Um, you look very tired. Thanks, Nivesh. Thanks for noticing. Big kiss for you. All right. Let's look up uh, iPhone. I am pretty tired. It, it has been a while since I had to work all night long. I've gotten out of the habit. All right, let's see. And I'm, I'm pretty, I, I was asking Christy earlier, what do we have around here that could be like a quick, easy stream? Because uh, it's a, the two, the, I'm down to like the harder of my stack of uh, Rush Data jobs. Uh, let's see, iPad mini, 
So I want to just kind of show you now how it is that ZXW can troll you and you never want to just rely on ZXW. ZXW is great, but it is only a time saver. It is not a substitute for schematic. So let's look at those same spots. So if we look at ZXW here, it says there's a dude, C 1761. Look, it's a capacitor and it's on some SPI great clock line, whatever that is. So that is a capacitor that if you look at our, um, our board, this is the donor board. It's missing, but those look like factory perfect pads. Oh my goodness, what's up with that? And then let's similarly look um, here. So there's this little row of two and then two down from that. Let's click back over to ZXW and see what he has to say about that. So two down from that, I think right here, there is C1704, some a capacitor on some line called PP1VA, great filter. Well, what's up with that? Now let's go to the schematic and let's look up, let's look up C1761 just for fun. So here's the iPad mini schematic. And what happens if we look up control find C1761? What is it? What can we learn about it? So here at the digitizer connector, C1761, it says no stuff, no stuff. No stuff means that it was not stuffed or placed on the board. So it was never there to begin with. And what's the other guy? I think it was this guy, C1704. So C1704 is also missing on our board. So let's look, C1704. What does the schematic have to say about you? Okay, C1704 is, is present, but this one is no stuff. So L1750, let's go back and see if we, if which one is that? L1750, yeah, so, so there's two guys, one dude and the next dude. So let's look back and see if that matches our, our board. So the, yeah, the two guys, one guy, and the missing guy is in that second position, which means that he is actually not C1704, but he is L1750. So L1750, a filter, that looks like it would be important, L1750. If this was missing, then gee, that would cause a big deal. So let's see who he is. L1750 over here, and it again says no stuff. No stuff, what does that mean? That means that that is intentionally omitted from the design. Now, why would that be? Well, let's see if we can think about that for a second. What do you think this thing does? Hmm, looks like some kind of a drawbridge that's connecting PP1V8 grape to PP1V8 grape filter. So if this guy is present, there's going, this is gonna be a wire there and you'll have PP1V8 grape present on both sides. Now, why would they take that away? If they took that away, then let's follow this path. So there's this other filter here that goes to this chip. And let's see, what does this chip do? Well, I see a power input to this chip. So VCC main grape, and grape is a word that means touch. And I can see that there's some kind of a data line here that says grape on, main to grape on. And oh, here's another case where I have no stuff, meaning main to grape on is no longer gonna come from that guy it's gonna come from PP1V8 grape. So PP1V8 grape is then gonna knock on the door, hello, ding dong, why don't you let, why don't you let PP1V8 S2R grape go through and shoot out PP1V8 S2R2 grape. And then that will come down through the filter and go out here. So what does that mean? That means that by leaving off this no stuff, we now have control of the presence of 1v8 grape filter, and it's going to be controlled by logic. So instead of always being present, we're gonna have a signal to, to switch it on so that we can control when we want that signal to appear. And you can imagine that, that maybe there was a time before this little switch was kind of built in here that during troubleshooting, during design, you wanted PP1V8 just to go through and not have it turn off and on. 
And then once that uh, design was, was finished, everything's working, this component, this sort of piece of the puzzle was added, and then you wipe away the drawbridge so that now the control of this signal comes from a chip rather than just always being present. So that is why you see no stuffs. There are things that are intentionally left off the board. So no stuff means not stuffed, not placed on the board. It's intentionally left off. So let's go back and look at our at this donor board again. So now it makes sense. This isn't actually a missing guy. That is a no stuff spot. It's a spot that um, was pasted. All the components were, were stuffed on the board, except not that one. It was not stuffed. And then when the board goes through the oven, everything heats up, solder paste beads up, and it makes these factory perfect looking solder pads, but nothing was ever there. So don't ever put anything back on a no stuff pad. You need to watch out for that. Same thing, this is no stuff. Now, now that we know what no stuff is, let's go back and compare to the board that we're trying to fix. So let's look at the same area. Here's the board that we're actually trying to fix. So now we can see on this top no stuff, it doesn't look factory perfect anymore. Somebody's touched it with a soldering iron. And that's, that's okay. That's probably from somebody coming through and trying to clean up some bridging or trying probably trying to replace one of these components that probably got sucked into the soldering iron when doing this uh, digitizer connector job to begin with. So let's kind of scroll down here and now here's our second no stuff and that's uh, not there. But here, this is something that jumps out at me. This, I want to question when I see something that looks missing, something looks missing there, I see pads. Is that no stuff or not? And according, according to the other board, that position is supposed to be a guy and it looks like a filter next to a resistor. So let's see if that's true. So now, I don't think this one's supposed to be no stuff, but we need to make sure. ZXW cannot tell us whether something's stuffed or no stuff. It'll always say it's there. So we have to look at the schematics. Let's go look up this guy and see if we can find out who is you? Who is you? All right, oops, let's take you guys over here with me to screen and look at the schematics. So let's see, this guy, his name is L1760. So we'll go from here to ask, what can we learn about L1760? <coughs> and let's find out. Okay, L1760, it does not say no stuff. So this is supposed to be there. It's been knocked off. So what does it do? Let's see. Well, general purpose in out button home when low. Hmm, home button. All right, so that makes sense. So now we've got uh, home. This is clearly a home button uh, signal line. So we've got the connector. Now the home button is on the digitizer and it is connected by a uh, solder joint right there on the screen. The actual home button is soldered to the screen and then the screen of course connects to the digitizer connector and then you've got this line here for home button that comes out of that digitizer connector. You can see it up here at the digitizer connector. This first pin goes to home button line, goes through a resistor and then it goes through this filter and then from here where else does it go? Let's just learn what we can about how the home button works. What does the home button signal actually do? Input, so we can see this inputting into Alice in the power management chip. And we can see um, that there's this 1V8, so it would normally be 1V8, and this is a pull-up resistor that's gonna isolate our data line, the home button line, from its parent uh, power line so that when the home button is pressed, just this side of the line will go low and turn 1v8 into a zero. And where else does it go? And then we have it inputting here to this guy, U0652, which is the great big CPU. All right, so that makes a lot of sense and that kind of uh, it doesn't go anywhere else. Um, and that tells a nice story. So now we get that how the home button itself uh, works and it's a pretty simple little thing where the, there's a 1v8 power rail that's always present and when you push that home button, what you're really doing is just shorting that line to ground. So you're turning a 1, 1v8, into a zero just for 
uh, enough time in order to send that signal uh, up to both the power management chip and the CPU where then magic is going to happen. Siri could be activated. You could take a screenshot if you're also pressing power button or you could just simply uh, prompt the, the screen to, to move back to the lock screen. That's what the home button does. So what's the problem here? How do we fix it? We're definitely not going to have home button function if a filter in that line is just missing. So now we'll have one V8 all the time. We have no way to short that to ground. Uh, one solution would be to just leave your iPad open and carry around tweezers. And anytime you wanted to activate the home button, then all you'd need to do would be to just do something like that. Touch, touch the home button pad to ground. That would be the same thing as pressing the home button. But that's not very convenient, especially if you're, you know, giving it to your kid to. Uh, take to school as part of their school supply list so we are going to try to get this one fixed so let's go ahead and just warm up these pads and see if we can do this job quickly and painlessly with the mini hot tweezers and I will pay attention to you guys over here in uh, in chat a little bit let's see uh, hi Jessa greetings from Poland where I bet it is not 3 2 57 a.m. I bet it is not 2.57 a.m. in Poland. I went to uh, Krakow one time and that was really uh, a lot of fun. But man, that is a city of cobblestone walking. And here's the thing I didn't get about all these Polish women. They're walking around these cobblestone streets and they are wearing high heels. I don't understand that. They uh, like, I get, there's nothing wrong with walking. I think that sounds really fun to kind of, you know, live in a city and, and, and do a lot of walking. But the high heels, what the heck? It was really funny. When I went there, I had kids and I had very young babies at the time. So we had, I had intended to take my, my six month old with me, but I ended up leaving him with, uh, back home with grandma because he had a, a double ear infection on that trip. And so then I was like free, like I don't have any kids. I can do whatever I want, I'm in Poland. And so I, uh, also spoke like zero Polish. So I thought it would be a great time to take the opportunity to get a haircut since that's the kind of stuff you don't really get to do when you are a mother of a six month old. So I, I walked into some place like Frizierski or something like that and I was like that looks like it says barbershop I guess. Does, that, does it? How the fuck do you happen to know that? Well it's the same word you probably should. Okay. So, did you go to the Frizierski? Yeah, you did. Why not? Because you had kids with you. You didn't want to be frizzed. <laughs> well, I went, and I and so the the woman hairdresser there is you know she speaks no English, I speak no no Polish, and it was amazing how how you could still communicate the universal language of, of women needing haircuts, you know, where it was just like, cut, cut, you know? And so you could have this whole like conversation. Um, and I remember just like, you know, thinking like that she too is standing there all day wearing these like huge platform high heeled shoes that must be the most fucking uncomfortable things in the world. Uh, super, super nice, friendly chick. And it was really fun. Like, so she totally gave me a haircut. It was weird to get a haircut where you can't chat, uh, but it was great. I mean, I think she, she like, you know, dyed, dyed away the gray, gave me a haircut. And I remember giving her a big hug and we took a picture <laughs> and that was that. All right, uh, let's get this, let's get this. Um, dude soldered on here. And hopefully that will be the end of it. All right, that seems pretty good to me. All righty. Just doctor some of those up. Let's clean that up and test. All right. Oh, <laughs> the other thing I remember about that trip, the, uh, the Polish, Penny uh, was the I think the Grosha, and the the uh, Grosha is 
one, I guess, like a penny, like one one hundredth of a Polish zloty. And a zloty is uh, one third of a US dollar. So that meant if you, you had a, a zloty, it was worth 30 cents. And I can remember that like a, one of these little Polish pennies, the Grosha, like fell down. And I remember thinking, that thing is worth one one hundredth of 30 cents and that it wasn't that that was not worth bending over so i just kind of kicked it under the bed and that was it jessa you're a tomboy oh because i don't wear high heels are you kidding me i guess what i did today i bought new shoes oh you can't see how do you do that look at that i bought new shoes the the shoe guy is going out of business i bought shoes for for even christy I think Christy's more of a tomboy than me. Do you think you're more of a tomboy than me? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'm not the wave lifter, so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, fine. I, I uh, have been known to bench press a few times a week. Fine, fine, fine. I bought shoes today. It was funny. I went in there into the, into the shoe guy today and uh, he's he's uh, it's really sad. This this place has been in business since when did they open? Like 1850. Really? It seems like it. I mean, it's been like forever. That's older than the German Episcopal Church that used to be our house. <laughs> oh, did the, did uh, the, did the church have a lot of like a Pedisano's ads in the in the bulletin? <laughs> that they that they mimeographed well let's say let's just give them a hundred years that they've been in business going out of business today right two doors down from ipad rehab really sad so i went in there to talk to the owner and you know kind of talked about biz biz stuff and and then he, so he's got this job of like liquidating this entire fancy you know kind of high-end shoe store so he's he's like well you know do you want to buy some shoes and I'm like I guess I I have been wearing the same pair of flip-flops all summer long and I'm pretty sure I got them at the dollar store and I'm pretty sure that they have an actual hole in the bottom of it and so I said <laughs> I told the guy I was like if I were you I would really attempt to to sell me um some some shoes let's see if home button works jesus if i even do that with my legs it's hospital day for me uh well i don't know what to tell you about that um so the guy was like okay so he so he's like what kind of shoes do you like and i'm like i like the kind that you that you buy shoes once and then you never have to buy shoes like ever again so he he sold me this pair of whatever these i don't even know i didn't even get the box i thought they were they were fine they fit okay ready let's see what happens come on work yay so christy remember that home button job done boom yay, yay. so there you go that is uh off my domain now all right so there you go i just i thought this would be a a good one do you want all this sure all right tested working 100 percent, bro <coughs> um that the you know parts issues control you we just did a video on the ipad mini where the top power button when that does not short press that is a parts issue from almost the same thing where there is a problem at the home button soldering connection on the screen but it's a parts issue and then here we have no home button on the ipad mini original which you can be tempted to think oh it's parts it's parts it's parts since keep trying parts keep trying parts um, but it's not always parts so you want to make sure that you look at the board and look for things that are knocked off and really develop that skill to be able to recognize a missing component as opposed to a no stuff a never was there component i'm gonna read read uh your chat and then we are gonna be doing camera is on an angle 
Yeah, well, it's three o'clock in the morning. Plus, this building is also from like 1800, so we are doing the best we can. All right, let's scroll back up here. Busy school, yes. Strange hour for a stream. You should take rest. Thanks, Nivesh. I will do that. I will get right on that. Uh, thanks for your recommendation. It's a pretty normal hour here in Hong Kong, is it? All right. Uh, something about a 6S TriStar. If I may ask, says Mario Ortega, who's the other technician engineer operator? Christy, how do you identify as technician, engineer, or operator? Uh, technician, I guess. Technician, I guess. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the other, the other iPad rehab mom. That's Christy. That auxiliary screw bitch. Wow. <laughs> uh, why not on YouTube? It should be on YouTube. Uh, fuck the XW. Okay. I see Lewis always the day after and Jessa in real time. Yeah, it's because Lewis is like definitely sleeping by now. Uh, Chris Long found out how wrong the XW can be yesterday. Oh, did he? I missed that. I'll have to go back and, and look. Wow. Seems like Lewis and you having huge workload these days. Um,. Uh, Lewis hired somebody today. Somebody that you guys know. Somebody from live stream. Thank you for streaming at our working videos. Uh, okay. 1219 in India. I am a secret admirer. The new YouTube user interface looks messy to me. Things are in seemingly random places with the outlines removed. Thank you for your complaint. I will file that with the complaint department. Complaint department. That's you, Christy. You're the new head of the YouTube complaint department. The YouTube complaint. Yes. It's just all you need is a trash can. Yeah, the inner the user the YouTube looks messy and the camera angle is fucked up and I look exhausted and need to take a nap. That's pretty much what I get out of all. That's what I get out of all of this. Oh. Uh, sad to see the serial anti-liker has struck again. Yes, I wonder who it is. Uh, <laughs> uh, do you use Blackfish for schematics? No. Yeah, they don't have... Blackfish is the same as all the other schematics that are out there. Laser pointer in the circuit. You can't see the cursor in the circuit? Really? Uh, let's see. Mar Mario loves parties and is very religious. Hmm. Haircut without con conversation sounds like bliss. That's really funny. Uh, whoa, Paul Daniels blew up an iPhone 6 screen. Chinese work boots. <laughs> oh man. Okay, are we done? In Poland, now it is 9 a.m. Uh, let's see. Jessa did? No, I don't know how to... I'm, I don't even have the YouTube thing open. Are you still not repairing? No, we're, we're, we're taking some of those uh, searching no signal problems now. We're going we're gonna to give it a shot. No, I think people are starting to do it now. 8 a.m. Started watching. Thanks anyway. Night, night, Jessa. Why no stream for five days? Also, there's a complaint. There's been no stream for five days. <clears throat> just want to put that down in the complaint you know it would be really funny to put a whiteboard to make the green screen be complaints about registered official complaints about this channel why people hate ipad rehab youtube okay so i uh it's time for bed so i wanted to just kind of put that up there and it looks like we are dropping frames like crazy so that is a good time to get out of here and TikTok enjoy the very last few days of summer, if it's summer where you live, or the very last days of winter, if you're on the other side of the world. Kids are going back to school on Tuesday, so we have just a few 
tiny little precious days left. All of Team iPad Rehab went to play mini golf. I beat Sunday in a go-kart race, so I was happy. And uh, my daughter got a hole in one, so yay. All right, um, usually stream every day, now I missed five days. Eh, what are you gonna do? Okay, let me see if I can remember how to hit stop streaming and I will see you guys next.